I've recently completed a lifelong Pokemon card collection goal. I'm super excited about it. And in this video, I share it with you guys. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all doing good. I am super excited to bring you this video. I've been excited for a number of weeks now since I saw that the completion of the collection goal was in sight. And yes, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be showcasing my completed PSA first edition Neo Genesis set. Before we do go any further, make sure you do scroll down below and leave this video a like for this awesome collection you're about to see and subscribe for more Pokemon videos coming every single day. So in this video, I'll be showing you my Neo Genesis cards and Neo Genesis was the first ever generation two Pokemon card set. I think I've said this before on the channel, but it's my favorite set of all time. No questions asked. I'm sure you guys know this story because I've told it a million times, but pretty much when I was younger, when these Pokemon cards first came out, my mum and I used to sit there collecting, putting the cards into the binders and organizing them. And we used to collect with my brothers as well. But Neo Genesis was the first set that was solely mine. My other brothers weren't collecting cards at that period. They went out to university or to do other things. But me, I was still going with Neo Genesis and I actually had the complete first edition Neo Genesis set minus the Lugia car, which I mentioned in a previous video. So many years went by and in 2016, I finally got back into my Pokemon cards, went into the attic, found all the binders and went through them to check their condition. And obviously, those who know about Neo Genesis will know that it's one of the hardest Wizards of the Coast or one of the hardest Pokemon sets to grade in the entirety of Pokemon. This set has so many print lines, centering issues galore. It's really hard to open a brand new or a sealed box of Neo Genesis and pull out a PSA 10 or even a PSA 9. I mean, you'll see on the screen right now how low the population is in PSA 10s of this set. And that's why the set you're about to see in a minute is not a completed PSA 10 set, but a complete PSA 9 and above with a couple of PSA 10s. So like I said, in 2016, I got back into my sets again, went through them and started to submit them to PSA. A lot of the cards did come back in PSA 9s, but I did get quite a few PSA 8s and there were some cards that I didn't even send. And I want to show you these cards before we do get into the slabs. As you can see here, oh, move my keyboard out of the way. As you can see here, these are my slabs. This is my full PSA 9 and above collection of Neo Genesis. We'll go through this in just a minute, but first I want to show you some of the cards that didn't make it to PSA. So these here are some cards that I chose not to send to PSA. As you can see, they're, they're ready to send to PSA, but they didn't make it. And uh, I think the reason they didn't make it is because the thing is, you have to remember back in the day, like cards that were going to get a PSA 8 just weren't worth sending. A lot of cards that were going to get PSA 9 just wasn't worth sending because the price back then wasn't what it is today. Today, if you've got pretty much any first edition Watsy card, you send it to PSA. Even if it comes back in a 5 or a 6, <laughs> you usually make your money back on the cost of grading, uh, which is pretty insane. But I believe this card right here, you know, it's perfect. Perfect on the back, looks absolutely perfect. The front looks great as well. Centering is not too bad, but if I do pull it out and I do, you know, zoom in a little bit, you will see that this card does have some prevalent scratching. I mean, definitely this card is worth sending and I will send it soon, but you can see there. Yeah, you can see there a scratch next to its head and then some major scratching on the left hand side near the swirl over here. It's hard to show you, but hopefully you guys can see that. I can see it with my eyes anyway, so I can promise you this won't get a PSA 10. And I think as of recording this video, there are only 10 PSA 10 first edition slow kings in the entire world. I mean, it's, it's insane, actually. It's literally insane. So as you can see here, we have a few more of the cards I didn't end up sending. We've got a slow king, Typhlosion 18. This is a really cool card, but it is not the Typhlosion 17, which everyone is uh, always chasing, including me. We've got Typhlosion there. Dark Valplume. This is from Jim heroes gym heroes a ride on as well now these are some obviously okay these aren't all <laughs> neo genesis cards these are cards there we go here we go neo genesis here azumarill blossom and a energy card right here and then if i do go into the binder you're gonna see we have some more neo genesis from my original packed collection with my mom back in the day let's go to this camera over here so as you can see these are some uh neo genesis cards that i never ended up sending because i didn't think they were gonna get a good enough grade we've got the azumarill blossom jump love togetic uh, energy and the jump fluff. And I mean, if I pull these out now and take a quick look at them, <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be definitely all worth sending now. It's just that back then I was going for PSA 10s only. As you can see, we've got a nick up at the top there, right there. This is really clean. Obviously, the centering is not amazing. So probably the centering combined with the nick on the back is the reason I didn't send this. But I mean, soon I probably ought to send these because it's just it's just worth sending, especially considering the fact that I now have, like I showed you in the last video, a full first edition Neo Genesis set. Anyway, uh, and this is binder condition. These aren't cards that I would consider sending to PSA. I mean, Lugia as an example. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, look, that's pretty beaten up on the top. So I'd probably just leave this in my binder as a collection. But yeah, you can tell that this is my favorite set. I've got so many cards from Neo Genesis. I just love this set so much. It has so much nostalgia attached 
to it uh, for me at least. I mean, look at the total dials. Um, so yeah, I love, I love this set, which is why I'm super excited and super proud to be able to bring this video to you guys today. Now, a lot of these cards that I purchased in this lot were from a guy called Low Popping on Instagram. Like I said to you guys, I didn't send a lot of the cards that I owned as a kid. So I ended up buying some PSA 9s off Low Popping recently. So I want to give him a shout out. Make sure you go and check his Instagram out down below. But ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the cards. Here we go, baby. I'm going to get Laura to put like a rough price down below. And remember, it's a very rough price. It's not the exact price. It's just what we've found on eBay, recent sold listings. And also price is subject to change. In three years, if you're still watching this video, it may be higher or it may be lower. Who knows? I'll also ask Laura to put the population down below of this card. And if there are any higher, cards like you know if it's a psa 9 and there are more psa 10s i'll get laura to show the population of the 10s as well these are my favorite cards in my entire collection no doubt about it so please please do uh, leave a like on the video and i just want to let you guys know i'm so excited so let's get into this baby we have an ampharos psa 10 first edition this was one that i packed as a kid and it did get the grade i think because the yellow on yellow border just helps with it it's got a dark hollow pattern uh so you know it's not prone to many scratching let me move this to the side now and uh, yeah, what a card this is. So there we go. I've now got the cards on my screen as a projector. Let's go. Ampharos PSA 10 first edition. Next up, we have the Azumarill PSA 9 first edition. Uh, this was a purchase from Low Popping. Shout out to you. Obviously, you guys saw I had this in my binder and I believe I have this loose as well. Yep, there we go. So I just didn't think this was you know good enough to send uh, to get the PSA 9 grade. There we go, baby. We've got the Azumarill. I'll try and get a shot of them all laid out together. But first of all, let's just go through them like this. Azumarill. Next up, we have the Belossum, the third card in the Neo Genesis set. And uh, bro, I mean, again, all these Pokemon, it's the first time I've ever seen them in the TCG. Ampharos, Azumarill, Belossum, all Gen 2 Pokemon featured for the first time ever in the TCG. Uh, and I just love these cards so much, man. The double star, <laughs> the design, it's just amazing. So uh, there we go. I'm also going to look at the back of these as well. I mean, these are, these are good, man. Look at this. Like it, Often... With Neo Genesis, it's usually the centering or the print lines. The backs are usually perfect. Like you'll see there are so many perfect backs, which is so annoying, especially when we do get to the higher valued cards because you get it back in a PSA 9 and you're like, bro, this card is perfect. But what you can't see are the faint print lines that the PSA graders can see. So it's really tough. Um, but yeah, super hard set to grade. Always has been. Probably one of the hardest in the TCG, to be honest. Next up, we've got for Relegator. Now, this is the card that I was waiting for the longest. I purchased all the cards. I bought quite a few off Low Popping, like I said on Instagram. But he had already promised the number four for Relegator to somebody else. So I couldn't get that from him. So instead, I had to go on eBay and get this card in from America. And this was the last card. I had, I had the rest of this collection in PSA just waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, and then I finally got this card from America. And I could finally now make this video to you guys, which I'm super excited about. So we've got the Relegator for there. And again, you do wonder <laughs> what, what makes this a nine. It's crazy. But it must be some print lines. I can't see it, man. It must be it must be the centering. I don't know. I just don't know. Next up, we have the Frelegator number five. Really, really love this card. I mean, let me know in the comments which design you like better. I think I have to go with the number five. Yeah, I just think the uh, the background pattern is just a lot nicer. We've got a nice swirl there as well. And I just think the uh, the illustration of Frelegator is a bit better there. But of course, do love both of them. Next up, we have Heracross. One of the greatest Pokemon, in my opinion, of all time. Super strong as well. Um, bug type. What a great Pokemon. This card is, for me, one of the hardest cards to grade. Mine came back in, I think I've sent two to PSA. One was an eight. I think they both were eight, actually. The Sentry is just not great. Uh, a bunch of print lines as well, like I said before. Um, so we've got another nine here. But I mean, nines, I'm super happy with, okay? When I first came into the hobby, I was going for tens because they were so much more affordable than they are now. But we're at a point, because of that reason, PSA nines are the prices of PSA tens three years ago. And I think PSA nines are mint condition cards. I mean, look at this card, like... What can you... Okay, there's some... <laughs> okay, there we go. There's some scratches there, but that could be on the actual case itself. I need to clean that. But to the untrained eye, you know, if you're looking at this as a glance, you can't see anything wrong with it. Uh, and they are mint condition cards. So PSA 9s definitely are collectible now, and I will allow them in my sets. Because some of these cards in PSA 10 are literally just unobtainable for me now, because the prices are just so, they're so high. We've got a jump Jumpluff up next. Again, a purchase from Instagram because I do love this card. And unfortunately, mine wasn't a PSA 9 contender. Next up, we have Kingdra, baby. Kingdra, let's go. The water and dragon type Pokemon from the Seedra and the Horsey line. Uh, really great. We've got a nice swirl there behind its wing, its fin. What would, you, what would you call that? Actually, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure. But there we go. We got Kingdra, Dragon Tornado. What a move that is. 
Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that the movie itself is good. I, I never used to play with these cards. <laughs> Although there's one, there's one. We'll get to the story in a minute. Uh, Dragon Tornado, if this attack doesn't knock out the defending Pokemon, and if there are any Pokemon on your opponent's bench, choose one of them and switch it with the defending Pokemon. That's, that's actually nice. So you do 50 damage and get to switch, which is really cool. Uh, but Kingdra, very nice there. And next up, baby, we have one of the big hitters in the set. Yes, it is time for the number nine, Lugia. PSA 9 first edition. Let's go. Look at this, guys. Look at this. I've got two of these. You guys know I purchased one of these recently, then I purchased another one because of the fact that I kept wanting to buy this card, okay? You guys know I didn't have this card in my childhood collection. I couldn't send it to PSA. I didn't have one. I had the unlimited version in my binder. It was the only card that me and my mom must have not been able to pack way back when. So I kept looking for this card for years and years. The price was too much. I didn't spend it. I didn't pull the trigger. And I think at the time it must have been like 300, 400 pound max. And now it's two grand. So I bought two of these, uh, one for 1,600 pound, one for 2,000 pound. I mean, the price I paid for these PSA 9s, I probably could have got a 10 three years ago. But it is what it is. You don't see many of these around. I don't know when I'll be able to get the 10, if I'll be able to get the 10. So I've got two 9s. I'm satisfied with that for now, but hopefully one day I will be able to get the 10. But I just didn't want to miss out on this card anymore, okay? I wanted it in my collection and uh, I've now got it. And I'm super happy about that. Next up, we have the Meganiums. Let's go. You can see down below that these Meganiums don't have the highest population in this set either. Uh, population, for those who don't know, means how many of those grades exist in the world. So, for example, if I say it's pop 10 or it's got a population of 10, it means there are only 10 of that grade of that card in the world. Okay, so Laura will put the population of this card down below and uh, you guys get to see that and the rough estimate of the price. Meganium is a really underrated Pokemon. A lot of people hate on Chikorita, but I'm a big fan of it, man. I can't lie. Here we go, my favorite design out of the uh, the Neo Genesis Meganiums. I think this is the harder one to grade as well. Um, worth a pretty penny in PSA 10, I'll tell you that for sure. Centering is not great, top to bottom, as you can see. On the back, though, it is ooh, not bad. It's got a few nicks, but yeah, I think the 9 is a bit obvious on this one because of that centering issue. Um, but again, it's not an issue. You know, I don't look at this and be like, Ugh. you know, look at the centering. I uh, I cherish this card like I do the rest of the collection. Next up, we got Pichu. Obviously, Pichu is a baby Pokemon, the baby version of Pikachu, but it wasn't revealed or it wasn't, you know, didn't exist until Generation 2. Um, and as you can see, we've got a really nice squirrel there. Really nice blue and yellow background. I think this population is quite low as well. Uh, this attack is really cool as well. Look at it. Zap. <laughs> That's really cool. They didn't want to go with just one Z. They had to go with three Zs. Uh, but here we go. Pichu, PSA 9. Really, really nice card. And definitely, again, amazing. Amazing. Next up, we have Skummery, PSA 9. And this is probably one of the easier cards to grade purely on the fact that the holographic is dark. Usually, dark holographic patterns do get better or tend to get better grades. And that's because the scratches aren't as clear in them and they're just not as prone to scratching. Yeah, there we go. PSA 9, Skarmory. And next up, we have the big bad boy, Sloking mint nine now again this card and the typhlosion card are the lowest population cards in the entire set there are only 10 of this sloking in the world 10 in the world in a psa 10 that's crazy to me man so if you do ever find one of these in a psa 10 please do let me know i would love to purchase it from you if i can afford it um but yeah definitely a card that is probably going to be unobtainable like a lot of these cards you know scott Murray, i can go about upgrading that to psa 10 pretty easily uh give or take but sloking it's near impossible. It just is near impossible because you have to realize even if a card is worth, say, five grand, okay? Say this card was five grand and I had five grand that I was willing to pay for it. Where do you find it from? No one's selling this card for five grand. It's going to be on eBay or it's going to become available somewhere. But at that time, if you have three people, three or four people with five grand waiting to spend on that card, it's not five grand. You know, it's going to, because I'll, I'll offer six because I want it. You know, I want the only PSA 10 that I've ever seen in my hands you know but then the next person will want it for seven grand you know so you have to realize the price of a card is always subjective and it's always dependent on the owner and the interested parties who want to buy it so the same thing with the first edition charizard like where are those you can't go into a shop and buy them for however much money they're worth you know you, you have to find it's just it's just hard guys it's just hard so that psa 10 first edition sloking probably out of my reach now um, next up we got a Steelix. Now I had a Steelix and mine came back a PSA 5. I have no idea why it came or well, came back a PSA 5, but it did. Uh, especially with this holofoil being so dark, but it did come back a PSA 5. Um, but here we go. I've upgraded, bought one off low popping on Instagram, and we now have a PSA 9 first edition Steelix. Next up we have a PSA 10, ladies and gentlemen. I think the only other PSA 10 in the entire collection that I own, and it's the Togetic. I bought this off eBay for £110, I believe, in 2019. So super happy to pick this one up. Uh, I think at the time I was looking at raw cards and they were just getting 
ridiculously priced. So I was like, you know what? I'll just buy. <laughs> I'll buy the Turkey Tick of eBay. Um, and I wish, I wish I went and bought the rest of the PSA 10 cards at that time in 2019. Uh, but yeah, we got Turkey Tick, PSA 10, perfect card, perfect back, perfect centering, and um, yeah, there we go, Turkey Tick. Now, next up, we have the probably most expensive PSA 9 or definitely the most expensive PSA 9 card and, and the hardest card the hardest card to get in a PSA 10 of course I am speaking about none other than the Typhlosion 17 baby the Typhlosion 17 from Neogenesis what a card this is my favorite card from the entire set and again I told you I was going to tell you a story about this card recently and the story is as follows me and my mom used to collect cards together you know this she always used to force and make me keep the cards in the binders she wouldn't let me play with them and she wouldn't let me put them in my decks. Obviously, now I'm grateful for that because my cards are in top condition. But at the time, I wasn't so happy. I was like, a six, you know, I, I, I was born in 1994. I was six when we got this card out of the box, man. Um, I mean, maybe we were opening boxes in 2001 or whatever, but the, the, the box came out in 2000 and it's a first edition box. So that does show that I was six years old when I was opening this. Uh, I used to go to a Pokemon club and play in, you know, in, in the tournaments and stuff with the decks. And I really wanted to use this Typhlosion, man. Fire type Pokemon, a starter, the Pokemon that I chose in my playthrough. I wanted to use it in my deck. So I think um, I think my mom always said to me, if you do take it out, make sure you put it back in after you play with it. So I'd have to put it into my deck and I'd have to write on a piece of paper what the card was and slot it into my binder. So in my binder in the back, in my actual binder, uh, I have a folder of all my Neo Genesis cards. And you can see a little insert where I've written Typhlosion in my handwriting when I was, you know, let, let, me, let me just show you. Give me a sec. Let me get it for you. All right. So here we go. This is what's left of my childhood uh, binder, Team Rocket, as you can see. And uh, of course, like a lot of the cards and a lot of the hollows are taken out here now. I sent them to PSA. So this has been gutted quite a bit. Uh, leave a like on this video. Let's see if we can get 2000 likes. If we can get 2000 likes in this video, I'll go through this entire binder and show you all the cards from my childhood collection pretty much. Uh, but I'll keep it kind of... Low key for now, as you can see, this is how I used to, you know, collect my sets. You can see me being six years old. Look at this, man. Look at these ticks. This is me ticking this off when I was six years old, guys, scribbling it out. I mean, my mom always says this is how I used to learn to read, you know, by collecting these cards. You can see we used to print them out. And uh, of course, my hollows, as you can see here. Um, where are we? Unlimited Team Rocket ready for grading. First edition ready for grading, you know, uh, but I've taken the hollows out. We now have all the non hollows and the commons and uncommons. Unfortunately for me, my brothers used to get priority. So the first edition hollow cards I didn't have from Team Rocket. I actually only had the unlimited, but the rest of the cards, the uncommons, etc., I did have. Here we go. If we get into, if we get into, <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. That is where the Typhlosion should sit. Uh, one, two, three, well, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17 okay well it should be here it should be here okay the, the type version should be here um but look at it guys look at this how do i get this out this right here is the piece of paper that i wrote when i was six years old to substitute the typhlosion card and now i have the typhlosion card in mint nine like this right here this is a reason i collect pokemon this is why i'm so passionate about it i've been collecting for years ever since i was clearly six years old and uh, it just brings me so much joy so much nostalgia and i mean this right here just having that little piece of paper I mean, if I could get this graded, I would. Like, if I could get this little piece of paper graded, I would. Um, it's just amazing to see, and it's just so funny. The story is just so funny that I have a, uh, you know, <laughs> memories here. You know, I've, I mean, my mum. I don't know, like, you know, if anything was to happen to my mum or whatever happens in the future, I'll always know that I have this connection with my mum, and the proof is right there. <laughs> this literally, I can hear my mum saying, if you want to play with it in your deck, you have to put it back in and put a placeholder before you do that. So. Oh, it's just amazing, man. It's just amazing. So there we go. That's why this card is my favorite Neo Genesis card of all time. <sighs> Tied with the Lugia. I like Lugia more, but I have the nostalgia of the Typhlosion 17. Um, but guys, as you guys know, I got two PSA 9s back from PSA and a PSA 8. But one of the PSA 9s was gem, man. I swear it was gem. Like this one has got scratching on it. This one has print lines. Um, the centering is not great, as you can see. But the other one... It, it, I swear it's gem, man. And then I, I know we always say that our cards are gem in 10, man. But I do believe it. Next up, we have the 18, the Typhlosion 18 um, card in this collection, which is really great. Obviously, this one's not as hard to grade, probably because of the dark hollow foil. Uh, so this one is worth a little bit less, but it's still great. Let me know which design you guys like the most. It has to be this. It has to be that one. It's just so sick, man. What a card. What a Pokemon Typhlosion is. Absolutely amazing. And then last but not least, we have the Metal Energy. 
from Neo Genesis with a nice swirl. This card, I think, as well, is a really hard card to get in a good grade. Or in a 10, sorry. Uh, the population is super small. So maybe this one I have to go and find as well. But again, look at the hollow, man. The hollow goes... Well, it just covers so much of the actual card itself. So more likely to scratch in. More likely to have print lines. Um, so yeah, there we go, guys. That is my complete my complete PSA 9 and above Neo Genesis set. Let me now get these all laid out and we can have a look at them together. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is definitely one of the proudest moments of my entire life. I'm so excited to show you this. This is what I collect for. This is why I collect. This is why I make these videos at the end of the day. Uh, so much nostalgia, so many happy memories with my family. So many happy memories from just me when I was a kid. Like we talk about nostalgia, but I don't know, just thinking of me six years old, it's, just, it's, it's emotional because it's just nice to see where you were. And it's just great. It's a great feeling to see where you are now and how many happy memories you've had in between those times. Um, and I'm really grateful for my family and anyone who I've met in my life. Um, and this, I don't know, this collection and this time period in my life just brings me with happiness and warmth. Uh, not only Pokemon itself, but also the memories surrounding this period of time. So yeah, absolute lifelong collection goal for me. Uh, something I'm super happy about. I'm super, super proud. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it, guys. I now present to you my complete PSA 9 and above. First edition Neo Genesis collection. I got hairs on the back of my neck. Let's go, baby. There we go. Obviously, I had to cover a few of the grades. And we can see the Lugia has got a bit of a light reflection on it. But if I take that light down, there you go. You can see all the cards right there. And uh, it's just amazing, man. Obviously, some of the artwork is being covered up. But it's hard to get all these cards in frame. But there you go, guys. My complete Neo Genesis first edition set in PSA 9 or above. So obviously the goal is from here is to now grade this into PSA 10. But like I said, we have a few of the cards here that make it impossible. Uh, the Typhlosion. The Lugia is more available because there are more of them around, but it's just the price is the hard point. I mean, the price is the hard point of all of them, but it's like, okay, the Typhlosion here, the Sloking here are like impossible to find in 10s. The Lugia is possible to find. It's just super expensive. My friend Rhymestar has one in PSA 10 and he packed that himself. Lucky guy. Uh, but yeah, guys, this is just a special moment for me. Super proud uh, to, first of all, own this, but second of all, be able to show you this. And uh, yeah, this will be going to my grave right now. We always talk about the value of Pokemon cards, you know, investing, are you making money? This set right here, I will never make money on this set. <laughs> I mean, maybe my kids will, maybe my wife will, maybe someone will if anything ever happens to me. But yeah, this will be with me to the grave. And um, yeah, super proud. Not all these cards are cards that I pack myself. You know, maybe this one here is a card that I pack myself, etc. But you know, end of the day, if my packed card isn't a PSA 8, I'm going to go and find one that's a PSA 9 or a 10. Um, but I still have that memory, of course, and I still have the ownership. And of course, I still have this binder <laughs> with the entire first edition set um, to look at and flick through whenever I want to. Because, you know, it's nice to have PSA slabs, but it's also nice to have a binder with these cards. So, yeah, definitely my favorite set of all time. That's why I have so many different copies, you know, in different mediums, cases, binders, you know semi ridges and everything but yeah guys hopefully you enjoyed this video uh one of the best videos i think i've ever put out one of my favorite videos i've ever put out for that reason if you could leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already it will be amazing and uh yeah guys i think that's it from me today let's have one more look <laughs> let's have one more look there we go my first edition psa nine and above set of neo genesis let's go baby guys thanks for watching i really appreciate it and i'll see you tomorrow for some more pokemon content for now though take care and peace out